Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India friends today we are going to work on what to present and how if you remember in the last uh, few classes uh, we started working on listening and speaking skills and finally on conversation skills however uh, when we are talking about presentation uh, the way we are looking at it today in these sessions the focus is on speaking undoubtedly but speaking in a slightly different context. Speaking in the context of conversation, dialogue or interpersonal communication is one where the focus is on transaction, where both the people are speaking or are expected to speak impromptu spontaneously. Presentation is definitely a much more formal uh, situation where uh, a different set of guidelines can be added. So, this improvement or I would say this modification uh, is something which needs to be addressed in a systematic way. So, today <coughs> we will be looking at uh, the basic elements uh, which constitute audience response and uh, before that uh, organizing the presentation, voice and language, body language and gestures and visual presentation. And we will be covering it in two sessions. However, uh, prior to that, uh, if you look down your presentation uh, window, you will find that a quiz would be attached. You can also take the quiz uh, to find out how good a presenter you are. So, that is your choice. The first uh, three things that we are going to focus on would be the audience, organizing the presentation and voice and language. But before we move on to that, let us try to understand what we exactly we mean by presentation. Presentation is a situation where only one person or a group of people are communicating and it is expected that another group of people are listening to whoever is communicating or whoever are communicating. The purpose manifold you can make a presentation in a company, you can make a sales presentation, you can make a presentation in a classroom uh, to a teacher, a teacher can make a presentation to the students. Presentation is where in a systematic comprehensive way a set of ideas are being presented or an idea is expanded, enlarged, elaborated and presented. So, when we are talking about these issues, <coughs> it is very important to realize that this needs a certain amount of preparation. Now, we will once in a while make a comparison with uh, conversation skills and speaking skills, where you find that the focus was on a generic preparation or a continual preparation, a continual process of learning as you are interacting with people, as you are listening to people as you are speaking to people. Why? Because if you do that, you will be in a position to learn how to spontaneously respond in different situations. On the other hand, when we are talking about presentation, something else is happening. You are being a given a certain amount of time. It could be as less as one minute. It could be as long as maybe one month. Let us say you are going out. Uh, to make an international conference presentation and you have one month in hand to prepare for that. But mind you, the amount of time which is given to you very often is fixed. So, you might have 15 minutes to make the presentation, even if you have one month to prepare for it or you might have just 5 minutes or 10 minutes to make the presentation. So, what you are able to put into it is significant. The other aspect of presentation is the use of other kinds of tools. You can use the blackboard, you can use pen and paper and uh, you can use 
a, a marker and a whiteboard. You can also use the computer, you can use slides, you can use photographs, images, sounds. So, you see that uh, obviously, we are covering a wide range of areas and uh, in one of the subsequent slides where we deal with multimedia, I have already discussed that we would be doing that, we will look at some of these aspects in a more detailed way. How to integrate, maybe we will have some hands on also we will plan it, uh, that is something we will explore. But coming to the first point that we have in mind today, let us focus on the concept of audience. Who are your audience is the first and the foremost question which you have to keep in mind because depending in, on your audience you will be making a presentation. Let us say I am making this presentation for my contemporaries, my peers, my friends who are in this particular field. Probably my presentation will be very difficult, different. I will not be talking about the basics, I will be maybe talking about research which has been done in this field, I might be I will be talking about citations, I will be talking about the kind of research we are doing in this particular field. So, the entire process of presenting the things as well as what I present will be very, very different. However, here I have a wide range of audience, but I am basically addressing people who might be coming for the first time or second time to sit down and look at uh, this problem of what is a presentation, how to make a presentation and so on. So, the audience counts because your presentation has to be totally geared to your audience. Now, I will give you beginning uh, something which probably give, will give you an idea and uh, in the discussion you could just give me the responses and we could find trends based on your demographic data. Which combination do you like? This or this? Now, the point is that uh, when we are talking about combinations, uh, we have two over here and this in itself uh, would tell you to a certain extent the nature of the audience. It is anticipated although we do not know for sure, these are presumptions that gender might play a significant role. So, that uh, may be the male population would preferably like a color like this, whereas a female po population may preferably like a color like this. Okay. We do not really know. The other thing which can determine this is a context. If you are talking about let us say fashion, if you are talking about let us say baby toys, maybe this would be more appropriate. So, it is not just on the audience, the audience also has to have a context. If you are talking about glamour objects, if you are talking about perfumes, maybe this would be more appropriate. So, that will be the context. So, the audience as well as the context together would decide probably what kind of a presentation you would be looking at, but I hope that uh, this just gives you an example of what I am trying to share with you friends. We have talked about interpretative communities uh, in the first session itself, where I gave the example of uh, the six elephants, uh, the, the elephant and the six blind men, where you see that uh, what I wanted to say was that different people talk interpret in different ways. Culture also plays uh, a very significant role black and white red. You see that if I ask you the question what does black and what does white signify for you? Very often you will find that depending on the tradition to which you belong these would have different meanings. For instance, uh, if you are looking at uh, the religious connotations, if you are looking at black uh, in the Indian context very often in the generic Indian cultural context and in maybe in the Hindu context, black might symbolize something which is inauspicious and white might symbolize something which is maybe holy, but the connotations are not so easy to pinpoint because white is also a color uh, which stands for widowhood, white is also a color which stands for peace of quiet. So, you, you do not really know, I mean, but it is very important to identify that cultures have different connotations and are you getting the right connotation. Black is a color as I told you which might be considered inauspicious, black might be a color which might symbolize darkness of mourning. For instance, in Christian tradition black uh, symbolizes mourning. On the other hand, 
when we are looking at the Hindu tradition, white symbolizes mourning because widows wear white saris. So, cultural connotations are there for various kinds of things. I am using the example of colors just as an as a point, but you can talk, talk about anything. Okay. Ambiguity open and closed. This is again something which we have discussed that uh, audience ideally in a presentation should have a clear picture of what you are talking about. Ambiguity is something which is to be avoided with most audience unless you want to confuse the audience, which can be in very rare cases the objective of a presentation, but in most cases the main focus of a presentation is to be as clear as possible. So, you see that I will be giving you two sentences and you find that uh, all those they look pretty similar. The first case the meaning is pretty clear, in the second case it is confusing and the meaning is not at all clear. Similarly, you see that uh, this is just to give you an idea that when something is ambiguous it is open to more possible meanings, possible suggestions of what it means the second sentence or second set of sentences. The first set of sentences are much easier to understand. So, you see that uh, you can make things either ambiguous or clear. Ambiguous presentations would give rise to multiple questions and when very often in presentations after the presentation is over you are asked questions, because as for the formal dimension of the presentation you people are not supposed to disturb you when you are making the presentation, but once you have made the presentation people will start asking questions. More ambiguity, more confusion, greater the number of questions and later on poorer the presentation is rated to be. So, you need to be aware of this. Context is something within which certain ambiguities can be clarified, some areas might be difficult, they might need elaboration and it is the context which makes it possible for you to understand uh, the meaning of things. So, where you are dealing with uh, complex things, please look at the, the context. So, once I give a context like this, you find that uh, the entire meaning changes, you have a new connotation, a new way of looking at the entire thing. A philosopher talking about the same thing, the entire meaning changes. Okay. Now, here is uh, an example of uh, the way that um, what you say is interpreted and I will give you another example of context. Context is not something which is out there, context is something which you create. Now, we will create two contexts for Kashmir visually and let us see how you respond to that. I repeat again, I am using visuals because they are simple and they are easy to understand and I hope that uh, you get the meaning of what I am trying to say. What kind of a connotation, what kind of a Kashmir are we looking at? You see that there is a word Kashmir, there is there are two colors there is a foreground color, there is a background color and they probably if you have already thought about would, about it would signify greenery, beauty and all kinds of things related to that. Okay. Now, let us change the connotation a little bit. Now, you see that uh, the colors which are used over here change the connotation, the meaning of Kashmir. This Kashmir is not the green Kashmir that we were looking at a little earlier, the context has changed. When uh, we talk about visual dimensions of presentation, we will maybe discuss this in detail, but here is a small example of how you see that uh, the presentation uh, just you see that background color, foreground color, background image and foreground image, very simple. The total meaning of the word Kashmir changes entirely and based on that maybe the, the presentation that you are going to make will kind of you, you kind of set the tune, set the tone of what you are going to present after that. So, these small tricks, these small awarenesses are going to help you. So, images and their relationships uh, is something which uh, I am touching upon here and uh, you find that. Uh, when you are placing images, we will deal with it in the next phase in a more detailed way, but what I am trying to do is integrate with audience uh, many of the dimensions like contexts, 
the culture, the thematic dimension as well as the image dimension, how to use images, how to present them for an audience to make sense or not to make sense. You need to be careful about how they are ordered and whether they make sense or not. Now, these images taken from the Tintin comics, you find that uh, this does not make sense and this also independently apparently uh, at least does not make sense in the sense that you are not able to connect the images. However, if uh, you link these together, even if you are keeping them separately and showing them in the sequence of this first and then this one, then you find that something else is happening. There is a cause and effect relationship. So, when you are presenting things, whether it is images, whether it is texts, whether it is a sequence of events that unfold through your multimodal presentation, how you present is very, very important. In which order, how you position them, either spatially or temporally, this is very significant because depending on the audience, this might be manipulated, this might be modified. For instance, today I am kind of putting it as a puzzle to you, so I change the sequence. But if I had been trying to show the humor of the entire thing, then obviously I would not I'd skip these images and I would focus on this image. So, culture, I have dealt with culture quite elaborately in some of the earlier presentations, but I simply want to point out that different audiences have different kinds of culture or cultural orientations. You need to be aware of their orientations. For instance, I will just give you two examples. You get a group of let us say uh, older people okay, who are religious minded and you present these two as stimuli to them. You ask them that what does Pepsi signify for them and what does Kali Puja signify for them. You will get a series of answers. Okay. Now, just take note of that. You can even do it with your parents, with your friends. Now, change the audience category. Same terms are being introduced to them Pepsi and Kali Puja, but this is for let us say a group of young school children. You will find that the terms they associate with these words will be very, very different. Now, you see that now what we are doing is that culture and audience. So, within a cultural context, these two terms have different connotations and so when you link it with the different categories of audience, the meanings, the expectations, the orientations and attitudes change. And mind you, this is a key word, although I have not mentioned it in the presentation here, attitudes, okay, orientations. Now, these are the key things you should be looking for when you are making presentations, because if you know the orientation and the attitude of your audience, you are in a position to develop a better presentation, because you know what they are going to like, you know what they are going to be interested in, you know what they are going to interact about and hence your presentation is going to be more successful. If you do not take care of these things, then your presentation is going to be bad. Let us say exposing, uh, talking about the various detailed religious dimensions of Kali Puja with young kids may not actually hold their attention. On the other hand, if you are telling them stories and even linking them with the fun and the frolic of Kali Puja, then the entire meaning changes for these students and they start interacting more significantly. Now, here is uh, again the way that the, the, the context changes, this is one way that Kali Puja can be understood maybe for the younger kids or whatever, this is just to give you an idea. This is another way that Kali Puja can be understood when the font changes and the animation changes, where maybe the action of Durga is being shown through the animation, the dynamism and the meaning changes. Please take note of the audience attitude, the audience's interest and if you do that, you you will have a very successful presentation. I have already shared with you the concept about ambiguity. Okay. You find that uh, ambiguity is something which has to be avoided in the context of an audience. Do not write too much, do not speak too much, do not put things in a very complex way, put them as simply as possible. Most presentations are situations where distractions are there. Most presentations are situations where somebody is listening to you rather than reading you. 
reading is a situation where you can have very very complex things presented because you see that one person is capable of reading again and again and again in a presentation the person is listening to you just once even in this video lecture you will hardly feel like repeating going back again most people will skip that so unless the meaning becomes very clear very easily at least at the beginning the presentation is a failure right <coughs> so here are a few questions you start off with when you are making a presentation and I would request you to take note of these whenever you make presentations who is your audience make a list of that what brings them together your audience is heterogeneous or homogeneous sometimes you have similar kinds of people then it is pretty easy but when people are brought together let us say by a specific occasion then your entire presentation has to take that into consideration and you have to have a different orientation otherwise it will be a failure let us say that different categories of people old young from various places are coming together converging we will take the earlier example during Durga Puja now you are making a presentation for them in whichever area you have to get to feel what has brought them together and see if your presentation has some component which is linked to that occasion like that particular context if you do that then you are going to be more successful than others what level how technical how difficult how complex that is something which you will have to decide what do they expect what do they want their expectations and their wants are very important if at all this course is of some meaning to you I will have to have been successful I have to be successful in anticipating at least to a marginal extent at least to uh, an extent of 50 percent as to what exactly do you need what exactly do you require what exactly do you want now people who would be seeing this particular presentation who are now watching this presentation are probably people who are interested in making a couple of presentations and they feel that maybe they will learn a few things which will help them in making the presentation those things should be there otherwise the presentation fails so audience and response now we are looking at the interactive process we were focusing entirely on the audience now we are looking at the interactive process so author and intention what do I want to communicate very often we have stories in fact uh, I uh, one of my colleagues and one of our students we did an experiment to find out that uh, to find out what people understand from different kinds of body language now it is one thing to say that I want to communicate this it is another thing to say this is what I actually managed to communicate I want to communicate let us say happiness interest but what I managed to communicate is let us say anxiety artificialness so you see that um, that there is there could possibly be a gap between what you want to say and what you actually managed to say what you want to do and what you actually managed to do what you want to communicate and actually what you managed to communicate and this is something which you need to cross check again and again so feedback clarification questions during the presentation and even before the presentation when you are preparing for it ask a couple of friends to find out whether it is working or not okay. as you keep on making presentations probably you won't need those props anymore but it is very important to do that and throughout your lives when you are making presentations you need to check that out now we come to the second phase which is organization of the presentation now that you know your audience this is the first thing you have done you have identified what your audience is like what your audience is the second question is now you have a topic in mind something has been given to you you have to make the presentation for these guys how are you going to do this so organization of presentation is the next challenging question that we will take up who are you talking to that is the first question we have already done that when we are looking at the audience what do you wish to convey again it would depend on the topic but even before the topic whatever the nature of the topic what about that particular topic it is let us say a topic like uh, forest fire even if it is a topic like forest fire are you going to talk about what is a forest fire are you going to talk about how you can uh, take care of a forest fire how you can uh, see to it that the forest fire is extinguished are you going to talk about how to prevent forest fire you see that the even if the topic is the same the intentions could be very different so we will have to look at those issues 
then when we are actually making a presentation there is a formal dimension to the presentation the presentation has certain components and even before you make the presentation when you are preparing you need to take care of them like the introduction the rest of the presentation and then the conclusion there must be an integral link amongst all these component now this is very obvious apparently but in reality is it actually so obvious everywhere we talk about introduction then the rest of the text and then the conclusion are they actually integral how do we go about doing that these are questions we are trying to address as we proceed see uh, organization of a presentation can be of various kinds you can use a rhetorical question you can talk about questions and answers i might start the presentation with a question what's a forest fire i know the answer obviously but i want to get responses from the audience i want to make it proactive i want to get them interested and the audience might at this point of time expect that at any point any moment they would get question the audience would get it would get a question and they have to respond the members of the audience have to respond to it this could be one strategy you could start off with a conclusion first you have done a study let's say that we have done a study in music and we say that we would like to begin by saying that uh, indian classical music manages to significant extent communicate the sense of or the emotion of peace and of a certain kind of sadness now this is our conclusion and obviously people would be interested to know how did you find it out did you go and ask people about how they feel about music did you make them listen to music now that is where the rest of the presentation follows and you tell them how you actually did the work which is something maybe we will take up later on when we talk about the oral concept the, the the element of music the element of sound that we would be discussing at a later point of time so organization is where you are planning you know that you might uh, make your presentation as a question answer session you might have it conclusion first or you might have it in the routine introduction the body of the presentation and conclusion or you can have it in a flexible or a wider variety or a mix of all these but whatever you do once you have decided that you will have to plan it out so you start by jotting down the outline this is what i would like to do maybe you will change your mind at a later point of time you can use a mind mapping technique what's a mind mapping technique i will explain that in a moment you can use storyboards a storyboard i will explain that in a moment then you plan out how it will flow the timing and how you summarize the entire thing so let's see if i am able to uh, kind of share with you outlining outlining is something like this the reference to the book is given at the end uh, this is just a example of that what to talk about so outlining is where you jot down the points what is it that you are going to do introduction body and conclusion what you are planning to do so mind mapping is something where again taken from the same book which is cited at the back uh, where you are moving off tangential i'll i'll give a demo of this right now and uh, the other elements i'll come to in a moment from now so let us say that uh, we start looking at uh, a kind of a mind map okay so what i do if uh, i give you an example uh, is let's say i write forest fire okay this is my central point so forest fire has maybe 5 7 diff different points like forest fire has causes of forest fire forest fires might have effects of forest fire forest fire might have something to do with prevention of forest fire forest fire might have to do with communicating about forest fire now if we are saying that uh, if i say that these are the four areas i'll touch upon then let's say that if i'm just taking one element communication then i might ask the question who i might ask the question how i might ask the question of, uh, uh, when and which components will be presented in which particular way okay if i'm talking about prevention then i can have prevention by awareness prevention by let's say uh some kind of a uh, rule which is provided guidelines which uh, legal legal issues are involved punishment is involved 
and even if you are talking about awareness, awareness can be through radio, through television, how exactly. So, you see that when we are looking at a mind map, it starts spreading. So, once I have done that, from here I can go to the outline. So, I can say that I will start off with forest fire, I will start off with the causes of forest fire, then effects and to how to prevent it. Okay. And in causes, I will take up these three points, effect these three points, these three points and then maybe conclusion. Now, here I have an outline, you see that from the my mind map, I have been able to translate to an outline. Now, from a non-linear sequence, spatially seeing the entire thing holistically, now I decide which one I will give priority, where I will put the first thing, where I will put the second thing, where I will put the third thing, so that my presentation can be articulated. So, I have a full grasp over what I wish to do and I will also be able to know whether I have missed out something or not. Now, Storyboard is something uh, which I will elaborate when I talk about visual communication uh, in the later presentations. Flow is important that it must flow, it must have a rhythm, Ev everything must be linked to everything else, cause, effect and prevention must be linked to one another. How will I link causes so that we can stop it? Effects, why it is so bad that we need to stop it? Prevention, how do we do about it? So, some linkage can be logically created so that we are able to plan this entire thing out. We are touching upon voice and language in the final part. This we have already discussed when we talked about speaking skills to a certain extent, but in the context of uh, uh, the presentation uh, situation, you need to be aware of the, the quality, the capability, the volume of your voice, the amplitude of your voice. In some cases, you will need voice aid and uh, it is important to know uh, where a voice is, aid is required and it is important not to either underestimate or overestimate yourself. If you underestimate yourself, you are shouting into a microphone and everybody is having a tough time. You overestimate yourself, you are speaking softly and nobody can hear you. The voice is important at this level. Voice is where you see that it's, it acts as a kind of a substitute for sentences, for words. In a written text, you have paragraphs, you have to begin with, you have a sentence, before the, even in a sentence you have commas as punctuation. So, com, commas, small punctuations, full stops, larger punctuations, okay. italics, emphasis, paragraphs, still larger punctuations, capitalized words, again some kind of emphasis. Okay. Now, you do not have these same techniques available to you when you are speaking. So, how do you do that? Short pauses, long pauses, repetition for emphasis, loudness for emphasis, slowing down for emphasis, okay. pointing to something, writing it down for emphasis, you can do different kinds of things. So, you see that uh, the voice and the way you deliver would be very, very significant in the context of presentations. And uh, we will definitely provide you with some links, uh, which will give you ideas about how different people are making presentations and you can test for yourself whether those presentations are working or not. So, you go to the discussion forum as we have already done in the earlier weeks and you try out those things and we will see how we respond and we will try to come to an agreement as to how it is working out. So, this is something uh, which I have shared with you. But Pacing is something slightly different. Pacing is how long you take to present something. Do you take a very long time or can you, you are doing it slowly, if I start speaking very, very slowly. I need to pace myself for this presentation. I need to finish it in 35 minutes. So, pacing can be in terms of how fast I speak, pacing can be in terms of what I skip. The presentation might have five other points, but I do not have the time. If I speak very fast, nobody will be able to make sense of it. So, that is that's not pacing. Pacing is that plan it out, okay, I have missed a few points, I have spent more time over some of the other elements. Now, I need to quickly go over the other things as well. So, pacing at a level of voice, pacing strategically at the level of where the various components of the presentations are there and how do I go about doing it. So, here are a few guidelines, you can just quickly have a look at it. And uh, you see that you have already discussed some of these issues when we talked about voice not being monotonous, which can be boring or dragging, bringing in interest 
emotions into your voice, so that your presentation is exciting, all right, slowing down strategically, all those things I have said earlier and also a little earlier. Voice vary the pace, vary the volume, vary the intonation, give breaks where required. These are some very simple principles, just take care of these and the majority of your issues will be resolved. As I told earlier when we were talking about voice skills also, you do not need to take care of too many things. Vary the pace, so that it does not become monotonous, vary the volume, because it becomes dramatic, vary the intonation, so excitement, emotions, interest, other things get communicated. Give breaks, short and long to demarcate conceptually the different parts of the presentation, significant components of the presentation, because mind you, there will be cases where you will be making a presentation only with your body and nothing else. Language, choice of words, okay. use simple words I have told you, avoid jargons, because our intention is generally not to impress people, well people are getting impressed that is a good thing, but clarity is our primary objective. So, in order to do that as, as well as to impress people, use something which people understand. Okay. Work on your pronunciation, practice before the presentation and if required record your presentation these days uh, with a mobile phone and find out how you have done, where you are making mistakes, so that you can improve upon them. So, you find that as I told you this presentation is divided into two parts. So, the, the non-verbal body language component of it as well as the visual component which I have slightly elaborated already here will be things which will be taken up in the next session. Thank you friends.